This is a big question. Gas piping bonding requirements. What do you have to do? Oh my God, it's not perfect. I hate it when my car is not perfect. There, okay, perfect. Ready for this? Hey Mike, what are the NEC requirements of bonding of gas piping systems? Oh, this is so easy. You're not gonna believe it. All right, let's understand the concept. Let's understand the theory, okay? And that is in 250.4A4 says this, normally non-carrying carrying electrically conductive materials likely to become energized. Now, what does that mean by likely to become energized? According to the NFPA, NEC code style manual, likely to become energized means that there's actually conductors there. An example, if you have a box and you put conductors, electrical conductors, of course, about in a box, and you take that box and you mount it on something, then whatever you mounted it on is likely to become energized. So if you have a fence, let's just pick a stupid example, but it's the best I can think of. If you have a fence, was well, the fence likely to become energized? No, it's not. But if for some reason you ran electrical circuit out there and you decided, I'm gonna take this box and I'm gonna mount it on, on a post of the fence, well then guess what? That fence now is likely to become energized. So let's review this. If you don't take any electrical circuitry to something, then that something is not likely to become energized. Okay, let's go back again. Normally non-carrying, carrying electrically conductive materials likely to become energized. What does that mean? That means you ran a circuit to it. So let's take a look here. Well, this transformer is likely to become energized. This panel is likely to become energized. This steel column is likely to become energized. Um, this gas piping is not likely to become energized because I don't see any electricity. So this gas piping is not likely to become energized, not this one. Now, if I had a fireplace, and if in the fireplace I had a switch that I'm turning on, let's say some fan, or maybe there's some other things in fireplaces today, who knows what it is, maybe there's internet access on a fireplace. Okay, okay, my mouse is moving here, let me see if I can stop it from moving. Um, so if you had a fireplace and you have electric to the fireplace, well then guess what? That gas piping is likely to become energized. If you have a, a, this gas piping, this compressed air connected to some piece of equipment and that's all metal, well, that's likely to become energized. So now we know what's likely to become energized. So this gas piping here is not likely to become energized, so the code doesn't apply to this. But everything else we've seen here is, oh, um, by the way, this, this duct work later on you'll see is not, metal ducting is not um, required to be bonded. So not, normally non-carrying, carrying electrically conductive materials likely to become energized, must be connected, I say bonded, it says, code says connected to an effective ground fault current path, which actually connected is probably even a better word than bonded, but you know, one bonding is not too bad. And it says, in accordance with 250.104, so this is just a general statement telling you what to do. So now the question was about gas piping, and I, and I get this all the time, particularly corrugated stainless steel tubing, CSST, gas piping. Mike, they want me to bond it. What are the code requirements? Ready for this? Now, in this case here, is this gas piping likely to become energized? Well, yeah, because you ran an electrical circuit to it and you, since you had power to this furnace, now you have conductors in that enclosure. So the non-carrying carrying conductive parts of this metal furnace is likely to become energized. So what do you have to do? Well, this is, well, then you're gonna have to bond it in accordance with 250.104. So now what does 250.104 say? It says, listen, the gas metal piping in or attached to a building is considered bonded by the circuit equipment grounding conductor. Hold on, Mike, what are you telling me? Well, here, so you gotta realize that EMT is considered an equipment grounding conductor and depending upon the rating of the flex in this particular case here, uh, more than likely, Brian, what do you think? That probably a, a 15 amp circuit is probably run there and this is probably not more than right. six feet? Exactly. Right. Well, if that's the case, well then that flex metal conduit is considered part of the effective ground fault current path, which means that this furnace and the gas piping connected to the furnace is actually connected to the equipment grounding conductor, which means it's what? It's bonded. And according to 250.4A4, it says go to 
250.104b says any metal piping, not talking about water piping because that's 250.104a, but other metal piping systems in or attached to building is considered bonded by the circuit equipment grounding conductor. No additional bonding is required by the NEC. You're done. That's it. There you go. That's how you handle gas bonding. Brian, did you say something? Yeah, Mike, we have a, a quick comment. Actually, I'm going to go back to your... Um, if you could go back to the one with the water heater, I've got a comment from Michael, and he says, um, isn't there continuity of the gas piping to the water heater, and shouldn't we just bond both gas and water heater? What? You mean about the water piping here? He's asking spe specifically, about, I think, about the gas piping because you said there was no, not wasn't likely to become energized. So I don't think it was clear that there was no electrical circuit going to the water heater. I believe is where the confusion is. Well, at. if if we if we take a if we take a look at this gas piping, it's going to a gas. We need to put a note here, Mike Corbett. Make this word gas water pipe. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, well, a gas water piping. So so therefore, there's there's no electric. So am I, I'm missing something here. What, what does somebody want to do? Okay, so since this is a gas water pipe, but watch this. I'm sorry, what am I saying, water pipe? If this is a gas water heater, so it, this pipe is not required to be bonded. Brian, do you agree with that? Yep, 100%. But what about if it was electric? Whole different ball game. Well, if it was electric, it's required to be bonded, but it's automatically bonded because you have to bring an equipment grounding conductor to the equipment in the first place. So there's nothing to do, no matter how you do it. There's nothing to do. Okay, that's it. That's the answer. But Mike, the inspector, everybody's saying I got to do this. Okay. They have been attempting to get this in a code to change this requirement since 2008. And the, the NEC says, look, this is gas piping systems. This is not within the scope of the NEC. So what they did do, they said, okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put an informational note in 250.104B and we'll just say something. You ready for that? Here's what it says. Hey, the National Fuel Code, NFPA 54, section 7.13, contains further information about bonding gas piping. Guess what? I don't care what the fuel code is. You know why? That's a mechanical code. I think that's the mechanical. Yeah, I think it's in the mechanical code. Whoever gets licensed and whoever takes a test and they have to bring their NFPA 54, not NFPA 70 to take their test and they're licensed and they do whatever they want to do. They can do whatever they want to do in 250. I'm sorry, an NFPA 54. That has nothing to do with the electrician. Okay, but Mike, you don't understand, man. They give us all kinds of crap and they say we're supposed to do it. You know what? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's go to NFPA 54. Let's find out what it says, so at least that you know what it says. Not that you're responsible for it, but if you decide, you know, Mike, it's easier for me, I just want to do it. I'm like, okay, fine, you want to do it, then go to 54. And here's what it says. Now, this is like a, like a little summary of what it says. 7.13.2 says this, gas piping system shall be bonded to the grounded service conductor the grounding electrode conductor or the grounding electrode with a six gauge wire copper run not longer than 75 feet. And they say you're supposed to do it in accordance with the NEC. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about in 54? We don't have to do anything with your gas piping system. So don't be telling them to do it in accordance with the NEC because we don't know what you heck you want us to do. So it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. Okay, so six gauge wire, not more than 75 feet long, uh, copper conductor. And then it goes on, it says also 7.13.2.1. The bonding connection shall be with a fitting listed for the purpose. In other words, they have to actually make a fitting specifically for the gas pipe bonding, specifically listed for that purpose. And you have to connect that fitting to rigid metal pipe or to the CSS fitting. And that connection has to be accessible. Okay, there's the rules. So now let's take a look at this. Here is the CSS. Of course, you can't bond the actual corrugated stainless steel tubing. 
So you could put a bonding fitting listed specifically for a CSS fitting, actually listed for that actual fitting. You could put it right on that fitting, or you could put it for a fitting listed to terminate on the gas pipe, specifically listed for that purpose. Copper conductor, six gauge, not more than 75 feet. Mike, what, what happens more than 75 feet? I don't know what you're supposed to do. That's, a, that's, that's NFPA 54. And it has to be accessible, so I can't do it up in this location here unless I put like a little access hole. Now my son, Michael, who's an electrical contractor, calls me, hey dad, we're doing this outside fireplace out here, da, da, da. And the inspector is saying, I have to bond the gas pipe. I'm like, Michael, this is not part of the code. Dad, I know it's not part of the code. Don't, don't get me into the code part, dad. Just tell me what am I supposed to do? I said, okay. I got your answer. Ready? He goes, yeah, dad, I need it. I got to get going. Dad, can you give me the answer real quick? Don't try to teach me. Just give me the answer. He's an electrical contractor. You got to get it done, right? He's an electrician. I said, what does anybody want you to do? He goes, oh, the guy said for me to go ahead and connect it over there. I'm like, connect it over there then. Just do it. It's not a national code requirement. We are not required to comply with NFPA 54. And if you're going to do something you don't have to do, you do it the way you want, the way they want you to do it. So by the way, this only applies to inside buildings or attached to buildings, not gas piping outside that's not going in a building. So this is a great big mess. It is not a code requirement. The problem is if you actually do the bonding of the gas pipe and something goes wrong, they are going to sue you. And if you don't do the bonding of gas piping that you're not supposed to do, they are going to sue you. It's called life. That's the way it goes. I'm done with that. That's my story. Sticking with it.